Bull, as we remember, is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, come as a devotee. <coughs> Shati Mato was not very happy with Advaita Acharya. She thought, it's all his fault that my son Vishwarup ran away and took sannyas. She thought, I better be careful and not allow Nimai also to go around him. So she thought to herself, he's, he's called Advaita, but actually he should be called Dvaita. Because uh, Dvaita, that means two, so I see him as that maya of thinking in terms of two-ness. So she just kept this in her mind, she didn't tell anyone, but Nimai understood everything. Now on the day when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was showing his Mahaprakash in the house of Srivas, that means he was showing his uh, uh, original, he, he was demonstrating that he is Krishna and uh, fulfilling all the, de telling all the devotees, yes, in a previous life you are Hanuman, like this, and uh, telling them to accept any benediction that he had offered, that, that they would desire. So the, all the devotees were coming and Srivas asked, well, let's call Shachi Devi also. But Nirmai said, no. She has committed an offense against Advaita Acharya Prabhu. So she is not entitled to see me in this form. So uh, the devotees conveyed this news to Shachi Devi. Uh, and she immediately went to Advaita Prabhu and craved pardon from him. In reply, Advaita started to praise her. That you and you alone are the one who can be the mother of the Supreme Lord. And considering uh, the glories of Nimai and Shachi Devi, he became more and more ecstatic and eventually fell on the ground and fainted. And taking this opportunity, Shachi Devi took the dust from his lotus feet. Then uh, Nimai was satisfied with his mother, now you are free from the offense. Well, the and in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught what is the danger of offenses to Vaishnavas. That even his mother. His own mother, uh, he would not, he, he didn't consider it proper that she even mentally criticized Advaita Acharya Prabhu. Even though you might, it might be considered that she had good grounds to do so. So, uh, after some time, Shachi Devi's fears became true and Chaitanya Mahabhu did take seven years. And after that, Chaitanya Mahabhu was wondering here and there, thinking that I, I want to go to Vrindavan. So by uh, tricks, Nityananda Prabhu brought him instead to Advaita Acharya's house in Shantipur. Um, and then all the devotees from Navadvip were called, come and take darshan of the new sannyasi, Sri Krishna Taitanya, because they were thinking that they might never see him again. So, uh, when he was brought by Nityananda, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, You tricked me. You told this is the Yamuna, this is Vrindavan. So Advaita said, you See, well, actually, this is the Ganga. So Yamuna has already flowed into Ganga, so it's also Yamuna. And this is Vrindavan, because wherever you are, this is Vrindavan. And there was a tremendous Sankirtan festival, there, day and night, for the next discussion of Krishna, chanting, dancing, and feasting on delicious prasadam. This was the program non-stop for several days. Some general points about Advaita Acharya Prabhu. I had already mentioned he was famous as a great dancer. So in, in Navadvip, uh, in the house of Srivas, and then later on the streets of Navadvip, along the shores of the Ganga, in Puri, uh, wherever Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's devotees assembled with him to perform Sankhita, Advaita Prabhu uh, would be present as the great dancer. So uh, an another point is that Advaita Prabhu is famous for his joking 
arguments with Nityananda Prabhu. Just like uh, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda first came after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas to Advaita's house, there was some joking. Joke? There's no word for that in Tamil. They don't joke, joke in Tamil. There's no joking in Tamil, it's, it's forbidden or something. <laughs> so, uh, then Advaita Acharya Prabhu, he prepared a huge feast, enough to feed at least 50 men. And Nit- but Nityanand said, well, this isn't even enough to half fill my belly. What's the use of you inviting us if you can't even feed us properly? Advaita Acharya said that now I lost my caste because I invited you to my home. You're, you're just a reject Paramahamsa. He said, I lost my caste having you eating in my home. And he said, you're just a reject Paramahamsa. Rejected Paramahamsa. So in this way, uh, Nityananda and Advaita used to joke by making mock insults with each other. Um, so uh, shortly after this, Mahaprabhu left Shantipur to make his base at Puri. And uh, Advaita Prabhu and all the devotees were plunged into the ocean of separation. And <clears throat> But there was a practice that they used to go to... Uh, the, the devotees from Bengal would go to Puri to spend the four months of Chaturmasya with Mahaprabhu in Puri. So it seems that uh, Mahaprabhu was traveling the first two years that he went to Puri. He didn't stay long and he went to South India. So after three years they first went. And then every year, they, almost every year they would go. And uh, Advaita Prabhu would go with all the devotees and participate with Mahaprabhu in all the different pastimes. <coughs> there are... Uh, uh, once uh, <coughs> Advaita Prabhu happened to mention in the presence of his son Achyutananda that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's guru is Keshav Bharati. So at this time Achyutananda was five years old, but he protested. How can you say that anyone is the guru of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he is, is the guru of everybody? Another of uh, Advaita Prabhu's sons was Gopal Mishra. Um, now, every year before the Rathiyatra, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees would clean the Gundicha temple. And once during this cleaning, uh, Gopal Mishra was chanting and dancing in great ecstasy. And then he suddenly fell unconscious. And Vita Prabhu became most perturbed and uh, took his took the body of his son on, on his lap. And he was chanting the Nrsimha mantra, but still Gopal was uh, deeply unconscious. And he, so Advaita... Uh, chanted many different mantras, but Gopal remained unconscious. So all the devotees became very anxious and upset. But then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu put his hand over Gopal's heart and said, Get up, Gopal! Chant Hari! Then Gopal stood up and all the devotees, with great relief and delight, called out loudly the names of the Supreme Lord. Uh, another, uh, 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 one secretary, he was a disciple of Advaita Acharya, he acted as his personal secretary. His name was Kamala Kant Vishwas. Kamala Kant Vishwas. Mm-hmm. Um, now, in the course of his duties, he wrote a letter to Maharaj Pataparudra, who was the king of Orissa. And in that letter he wrote that, you know, this Advaita Acharya is the Supreme Lord. But it happens that he is owing some debt to you. So you please uh, excuse that debt. Somehow or other news or, or, or that letter came to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
uh, and he became very angry at Kamalaka and told him, you never come to see me anymore here in the Gambhira Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's room in Puri. Kamala Khan became very unhappy, but Advaita Acharya said, you're very fortunate to be punished uh, personally by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, uh, Bhakti Thakur has commented, he has explained what was Kamala Khan's mistake, that Advaita Acharya is Bhagavan, but he's taken the part of a avanacharya, a human being, to teach others. So for an acharya to uh, beg from a king for, for some money, for some materialistic purpose, uh, that is not proper behavior. In this regard, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that if one eats the food given by a materialistic person, or, or, or paid for by a materialistic person, then the mind becomes polluted. And so he can uh, no longer remember Krishna and his life is spoiled. When the devotees of Bengal would go to Puri, uh, they would invite those, they would invite Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to their temporary residences for lunch. So, um, one day Mahaprabhu was scheduled to take his lunch prasadam at Advaita Prabhu's residence. Advaita Prabhu personally cooked and his wife held by cutting vegetables and so on. So it, Advaita Prabhu had a, uh, a desire which he hadn't expressed. Now you see, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would go to, for lunch, all, so many sannyasis would go with him. But um, it was at but Advaita, without telling anyone, he thought, I'd just like to serve Chaitanya Mahaprabhu only, then I could give him full attention. So it just happened that just before lunchtime, uh, unexpectedly there was a tremendous storm. And due to that, only Mahaprabhu came for lunch. And Advaita Prabhu was praising Indra, who sends the rain. That Indra is... Uh, a servant of Krishna, and he's fulfilling the desires of his devotees. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, himself praised Advaita Acharya uh, by declaring with <coughs> all this on them. Uh, Uh, by declaring that Chaitanya, uh, that Advaita Acharya is unparalleled in his understanding of all. Uh, his, let's get the beginning. He, he said that uh, because I associate with Advaita Acharya, who is directly the supreme personality of Godhead, my mind has become purified in understanding of all the scriptures. And in Krishna Bhakti, there is no, there is no one uh, equal to him. Uh, therefore, he is called Advaita Acharya. By his mercy, even uh, meat eaters, mlechas, can come to Krishna Bhakti. So, uh, who, who, can dis, uh, who can describe his power of Vaishnavism? Mm. Yeah. Um, again, on another occasion, Mahaprabhu praised Advaita Acharya that um, 
he said that taking great difficulties out of his great mercy upon me, Advaita Acharya comes to uh, Puri. I am uh, in. I am indebted uh, by his love, and I'm not able to repay that debt. He. Uh, Now, we heard how Advaita Acharya called Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now, one time, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sent Jagadananda Pandit to, from Puri to Bengal. And when Jagadananda was going to return to Puri, he asked permission from Advaita Acharya. And um, Advaita Acharya told, all right, I have a message for... And that message was in cryptic language. That... Uh, I'll get the originals. It's easier. Uh, please uh, <coughs> tell Mahaprabhu that I'm offering my, uh, millions of obeisances at his lotus feet. Submit the following uh, request to him. Tell the bowel, that means the madman. Tell, tell the madman that everyone has become mad and that uh, rice is no longer being sold in the market. Tell him that uh, there are no more takers in the market and that this which has been spoken to you, this has been this message is from another madman. So when, so when this was uh, spoken to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the presence of others, no one could understand. Only Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and uh, Sri Dhamada they could understand. Sri Dhamada, uh, even though he understood, he inquired from Mahaprabhu, what does this mean? I couldn't catch its meaning. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that Advaita Acharya is a very powerful pujari and he knows all the He's expert in all the uh, rules and regulations of Shastra regarding uh, puja. Uh, some sometimes he calls a deity for the sake of worshipping him, keeps the deity for some time to worship, uh, and then uh, when the worship is over, he sends the deity away. But I don't know what is the meaning of this message, nor what is in his mind. He is the Advaita Acharya is the greatest mystic, and he's very expert in writing sonnets or, or riddling rhymes. I can't understand the meaning of this. All the devotees were astonished to hear this. And Srub Damada, he became because what actually the meaning is that Advaita Acharya called Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he told that now it's time for you to go. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. What happened after that? After that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became more and more ext ecstatically absorbed and eventually he passed away. Although it actually seems it was some years after he received this. How did he pass away? How did he pass away?